Hi, welcome to a vinyasa practice. My name is Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me on your mat. We're going to start lying down with the knees bent. Take your time. If you're me, I'm working through a little bit of a, an injury here. So I'm moving a little slower. Bend your knees, plant your feet, and then walk your feet to the edges of your mat. Let your knees drop toward midline. Do whatever feels most natural with your arms. I'm actually going to reach my arms back up over the head, bend the elbows, and open through the chest this way. Let yourself settle in. Take a couple more conscious breaths, maybe a little bit deeper inhale. And a long exhale. And just stay here connecting with the sensations in your body for a few more rounds of breath. What I love about this practice of yoga is that it's meant to deepen our awareness. So if you happen to be working through discomfort or healing or recovering from an injury, even if those pockets of discomfort or injury are more mental than physical, the goal of the practice is to deepen our awareness and to give us a chance to respond to challenging sensations, challenging emotions, skillfully. If you haven't reached your arms back up over your head, do so now, interlace your fingers, walk the feet to hips distance apart, and then press your palms back behind your head as you push your feet down. Try and connect the middle and the lower back to the mat. Your butt might lift a tiny bit, sit bones might lift, but we're flattening the low back down, pulling the navel in. Take one more big breath in as you stretch through your side body. And then exhale your right knee into your chest. Let your left leg stretch out and then draw some circles with the right knee. Maybe you mobilize your right ankle, slow everything down a little bit so you can get into those nooks and crannies and the joints before we load them. Ask them to do a lot for us. Let's take that right knee to the left, bringing your left hand to the crook of the right knee, finding a twist. And T or cactus, your right arm. Keep the neck long, but maybe if you tip the chin over to the right, stay here, take a big breath in. And then stay for the exhale, let your right shoulder and your right knee get heavy. Inhale your head and your knee back through the center. And then keep holding your right knee, interlace your fingers around the right shin. Left leg stays long for a moment. Curl the head, the neck, and the shoulders up. Keep the left leg long, but start to float that left leg up off of the mat, keep pressing your low back down, your mid back down. So the space between the back side and the bottom of the ribs and the top of the hips pushes down. We're not gapping between the low back and the mat. Switch legs, pull that left knee in. Nice, good squeeze. Let's alternate side to side. You can find a pace that feels good for you. I'm gonna move slow, most likely today. We'll see what happens. If my body <laughs> appreciates picking up the speed at some point, I may, but otherwise I'm just gonna take it at a tempo that gives me enough time to respond to the sensations in my body. So key when we're recovering and coming back to movement. Then next time you've got your left knee in, hold it there. Lower the right leg, lower the shoulders, the neck and the head. And then maybe you circle the left knee, maybe you circle the left ankle. Breathe in, breathe out. Let go of any gripping in the abdominals. And then take a twist, bringing your left knee across your body to the right. Let's see if you can send the breath a little bit further down your spine toward your low back. And one more long inhale, fill up. Stay for the exhale, left shoulder, left knee, get heavy. And back to the center, left knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers around the knee again, curl head, neck, and chest up. Float the right leg up. This time we're going to straighten the left leg, maybe with a bend in the knee if you're meet me, and interlace your hands behind the left hamstring or knee. Switch legs. Switch legs. 
and keep switching side to side. Get a little hamstring stretch going. If you feel nice and loose and open, you might be reaching more for your calf. For three, we're gonna hug both knees in in two, and one, bring both of your knees into your chest, rock forward and backward until you can find a seated position. Once you're seated, reach your arms up over your head, interlace your fingers, same stretch to the sides of the body, keep your chin level so we're just lengthening and, and opening the spaces between the vertebra. Push your sit bones down gently into the mat. Take another big breath in, and then spinal twist to the right, release your fingers outside of your uh, left leg, or right leg, excuse me, and your right hand back behind your low back. Find length in your spine one more time. Breathe in. And then twist, look over your back shoulder. We're going to come to the center. This time, take a back bend. Reach up, look up, arch your spine. And then exhale, twist to the left. Stay here, lengthening out your spine. Breathing in, make sure your right sit bone is still connected to the mat. Twist a little deeper as you exhale. And back to the center, a little back bend on the in breath, look up, twist to the right just for your exhale. Back to the center, inhale, arms up, maybe this time the palms touch. Twist to the left as you empty out. Back to the center, connect the palms, look toward your thumbs, and then pull your hands to your heart or maybe a little lower than your heart. Let the shoulders drop, let your eyes soften or even close. And set up the intention that as best as you can throughout your time on your mat, throughout your practice today, you'll come from an intention to take care of yourself. And sometimes that means that we push and we challenge ourselves, be really satisfying in some phases of life on some days. And other days, it means that we back off a little bit. So find what works for you today. Take modifications, take variations, and just be true to yourself and what your body needs, trusting that at the end of practice, if that's been your intention, you'll get exactly what you needed. Stay here, take a big breath in through your nose, really fill up, fill your lungs, fill your belly, sit in a little bit more breath at the top. And then open mouth, exhale. Blink your eyes open. Meet me in a downward facing dog. Hands are about shoulder distance at the top. Feet are about hips distance at the back. Take a peek at your feet and notice if your heels are turned in or out. See if you can point the heels straight back so the outer edges of the feet are parallel with the edges of your yoga mat. You can bend into one knee or the other knee. Maybe give your head a gentle shake or a little nod. From downward facing dog, Bring your feet together, big toes touch. Root down through your left foot, lift your right leg, bend your right knee. Maybe you keep your left knee bent to really push your chest toward your left thigh. Let's re extend the right leg, take a breath in, and then we're going to step the right foot between the thumbs, drop the left knee down, and reach your right arm up and open for a twist. And stay here, or if you feel really open, reach that right arm back, bend your left knee, catch your foot or your ankle. Either way, push your left hand down to spin the chest open. Use your breath to find space across the chest. And then tuck the back toes under, release the left foot if you caught it. We're gonna pivot the toes toward the left and walk your hands toward the left about a quarter of a way for your straddle forward fold. Drop the head, relax the neck and the jaw, maybe you nod the chin side to side. A couple nice deep breaths here. Option to interlace your hands behind your head and then open up through the elbows as much as you can. We're not pulling the hands on the head, it's just adding a little overpressure. I'm looking for a stretch in front of the chest as you open the elbows, shoulder blades squeeze toward your spine. If you caught that bind at the back of the neck, release your right hand down. Let's lift the left arm up and open. Send your sit bones back behind you so your spine is long. Breathe in. And then sweep the hands to the top of the mat. Pivot the toes forward. We're going to step the right foot back to the top of a push-up. You're in a plank pose here. With your shoulders over your wrist. Push straight down to the shoulders and the wrists. Shift forward. 
Drop the knees down, you're in a kneeling plank pose, and then lower halfway down. Keep your navel pulling in and up. Abdominals are strong here. Back to that kneeling high push-up. Feel free to lift the knees if you want. And then kneeling low push-up. Two more. Inhale up. Exhale down. Again, breathe in. Lower down all the way to your belly. Come on to the tops of the feet here. And then float the arms into a W shape as you push the toenail side of your feet down. Pull the elbows back. Imagine that you're trying to pull the air in front of you back underneath you. You could bring your hands to your mat. Instead of pushing down, pull as if you were trying to pull your mat underneath your chest. You can even try that out here. We're activating the upper back should feel really satisfying to get the muscles in the upper back working. Sometimes that area can be just a little stiff and tight in a way that means that those muscles don't mobilize as much as we might like. One more time, either you're holding that isometric here or you can curl one more time that mat up, take a big breath in, release the mat, tuck the toes under, come onto your hands and your knees, Separate the knees just a little wider and bring your big toes together as you press your chest back for child's pose. Couple deep breaths as you crawl your fingertips toward the top of the mat. Maybe you lift the elbows, maybe you even lift your palms, but keep the finger pads pressing down, opening up through the underarms and the side body. On an inhale, shift forward to your hands and your knees, tuck your toes under, push into your palms, downward facing dog as you exhale. Let's root down through the right foot, lift your left leg, bend your left knee, maybe you bend the right knee as well. Use your left hand to push your chest towards your right thigh. You're going to square your left underarm equal with the right. Let's re-extend the left leg, breathe in. And then step between your thumbs, right knee softens down as the left arm reaches up. And your right hand directly beneath your shoulder and push that bottom hand down. So instead of trying to use this top arm to rotate, press down through your right hand. Stay here or reach back and catch your right foot with your left hand. Use your breath, find space in the front of the chest, space in areas that feel a little tight. If you caught the back foot, we're gonna release it, tuck the back toes under, breathe it as you lift the back knee, and then find your straddle on this side. This time, bring your hands to your lower back, interlacing the fingers at the low back. Drop your head, maybe you nod the chin side to side, maybe even rock the shoulders side to side. So if you've practiced with me before, my legs are usually a lot straighter in this pose, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing what you need from day to day. In fact, this practice is going to serve you way, way better if you stay true to the reality of the present moment and how it's unfolding in your life, in your body. We can learn to respond with skill to lots of different experiences, lots of different circumstances. Release the bind if you caught it. Left hand stays down, reach your right arm up and open as you continue to tug the hips back gently, reach the crown of the head away from your breastbone, take a breath in, sweep the hands to the top of the mat, give it the toes forward, left foot steps back to high push up. This time we're gonna rock forward, lower half or all the way down. From here, you have the option to take upward dog or cobra, or I'm gonna come back to a high push up today. So that's gonna be our inhale. And then down dog will be the exhale. Let's try that again. High plank, breathe in. Low plank or all the way to the mat as you breathe out. You choose up dog, cobra, or high plank on the in breath. And then downward facing dog on the exhale. One more, inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower half or all the way. Cobra, up dog, or high plank, breathe in. And then downward facing dog as you empty. Look forward, lift both of your heels. And then let's step the feet wide to the top of the mat, finding malasana. Heels are slightly tilted in, toes are out. Sink your hips down between your heels, bring your hands to your heart. Press your elbows into the inner thighs as you find some length in the spine. Breathe in. 
Push your thighs into your elbows, exhale, sit up even taller, reach the crown of the head toward the ceiling. One more breath in, elbows and thighs press toward each other. And then fold forward on your exhale. Feel to your feet a little closer together. Find a halfway stretch, but bring your hands to your lower back. So elbows are gonna point up or out. And then use your hands to check the alignment of your hips and your pelvis. We want to create a little bit of a flat back here. The other great thing about this arm variation is it's going to pull the shoulder blades onto the back. Reach the crown of the head straight forward. There's a tendency to look up here. Try and bring the neck in line with the rest of the spine. You can even bring one hand to the back of the head and feel that. One palm to your sacrum, feel into that length. Take a big breath in. And then we're gonna fold forward, catch the calves. Maybe you slide your hands down the back of the legs. Do that again, lift up halfway, palms to the low back, breathe in. And fold forward, hands to the calves as you exhale. Hands to the low back, halfway stretch here. Stay in your halfway stretch, but let's tee the arms out to the side. So arms and chest are parallel to the ground. Take a big breath in. Catch your calves, fold forward, drop your head. Slowly unroll, keep the knees soft, pull your navel in toward your lower back. Once you're upright, reach your arms over your head, breathe in. And then catch your left wrist, find a side body stretch, root down through both of your feet, lengthen the tailbone, hug the inner thighs gently toward each other. Come back to the center, take a big breath in. You might even look upward. And then catch your right wrist, side bend over to the left. Feel the stretch in the right side of your body. Feel the contraction in the left side of your waist. Back to the middle on an inhale. And then fold forward, hinge at the hip, soft bend through the knees or a big one. Halfway stretch, take a breath in. Plant your hands, step back, high push up, rock forward, lower half or all the way down. Cobra up dog or high push up, breathe in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Right leg lifts on the in breath. We're gonna step the right foot through between the thumbs. This time keep your left heel grounded. Warrior one, as you square your hips and your chest toward the front of your space, root down through the base of your right big toe. You can start by setting your eyes forward. Gradually over time, you might work on bringing your gaze upward. Maybe you even bring the palms together and work on taking your eyes toward your thumbs. Lengthen out through your spine and your arms, wherever you are here, breathe in. We're gonna wing the arms by the side and hinge forward. One nice long line of energy from your back ankle all the way through the base of your skull. So again, instead of cranking the neck here, see if you can sense those cervical vertebra, the top vertebra coming in line with the rest of the spine. Lots of energy through the legs here. Hang out, one more big breath in. And your exhale. We're gonna cartwheel that left arm up and open. Straighten up the right leg as you reach your right arm up. Big stretch through the right side body. You might even soft bend your back knee and send that left hip slightly forward to find some more space in your low back and open through your chest. Breathe in. Circle the hands to the top of the mat. Step your right foot back, lower half or all the way down. Up dog, cobra, or high push up, breathe in. Downward facing asthma. Left leg lifts on and in breath. We've got that same sequence on the other side. Step it through, find warrior one. Head with the right heel down, reach the arms up, set your gaze straight forward, or perhaps gradually start to work on taking your drishti or focus upward. And see what feels more freeing in your body, what feels more spacious around your heart, around your neck, around your throat. So letting go of any hierarchy of what your pose needs to look like and really diving into how it feels. When you feel strong and rooted through your feet and your legs while finding some expansion, some freedom, some spaciousness in your heart, your arms, your chest. Take a big breath in, engage your core, lean forward, wing your arms, push down through your feet as you pull back through the fingers, coming into your lightning warrior. 
round the shoulders and rotate through your palms and your arms. So keep the arms straight. We're just gonna rotate a few times here. Really let the shoulders roll away from your spine and then rotate the arms, really squeeze the shoulders toward your spine. Do a couple more like that. Let the wrists come along for the ride. So spiral the entire arm bone and hand for three. Keep pushing down through your feet for two. One, we're gonna find our reverse triangle, straightening out that left leg, reaching the left arm, maybe bending your right knee. Send your tailbone down, maybe even straight down or slightly forward if you're bringing the back bend into your chest, into your upper back, breathe in. Circle your hands, step back, flow through your vinyasa. Remember that's lowering hopper all the way on the exhale, cobra or up dog or high plank on the in breath. And then back into downward facing dog. Good, stay here, take a breath in. Open mouth, exhale, relax the jaw and clench your teeth. Look towards your pinky fingers, lift your heels. Step both of your feet to Malasana, feet are wide at the top of the mat. Hands to your heart, take a breath in. Fold forward as you empty, heel to the feet a little closer together. Halfway stretch on your in-breath. Forward fold, exhale. Unroll all the way as you fill up. Catch left wrist, go right as you empty out. Back to the middle, breathe in. Swap sides as you breathe out. Take it through the center on your in-breath and then fold forward, exhaling. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Vinyasa will meet a downward facing dog and then we're gonna put that sequence together. One breath, one motion. Right leg high on the in. Step it forward on the out, left heel spins down, warrior one, breathe in as you reach. Lightning warrior, exhale, root down to the base of your front foot. Reverse triangle, sometimes we call it sky archer, take a breath in. Circle the hands, step back and flow through. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Breathing in, down dog, exhale. Left leg up on the in. Step it through on the out. Rise to one, breathe in. Lightning, reach back with your fingers. Reverse triangle or sky archer. Cartwheel hands, step back and flow. Nice deep breath in. Down dog on the exhale. Take one breath in. And stay here as you empty, put your chest toward your thighs. Lift the heels, breathe in, look forward. Malasana, step your feet wide to the top of the mat. Hands to your heart. Take a breath in. Fold forward and empty. Heel to the feet a little closer. Halfway stretch on the in-breath. Fold forward and exhale. Rise all the way up as you breathe in. This time we're gonna take an open arm twist to the right. You can keep the legs straight. If you need a little bit more, you can bend your knees. And focus on showing your shoulders, your shoulder blades to the left side of your space. Really as if you're trying to show off your shoulder blades, especially that right one. Rotate that right shoulder back in space. On an inhale, come back to the center. And then open arms to the left. Option to keep the legs straight or to bend the knees. Try and bring that left shoulder blade toward the same plane as the right. It's most likely not gonna get there, but focus on your back. Sometimes when we're trying to stretch the chest open, it's really helpful to think about contracting the muscles in the back. On an inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, fold forward. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Vinyasa, this is our high to low. Inhale, cobra or up dog or high plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg lifts, breathe in. Step your right foot through as you empty. Same start to our sequence, warrior one, inhale. Lightning warrior, exhale. This time we're gonna drop the back knee down, come up into a supported crescent lunge. Pull back so your hips are stacking over your left knee. 
and then fold forward as you straighten out the right leg for Hanumanasana. For some sensation in the back of the right hip and thigh. You can curl the right toes back towards you, even that right pinky toe. Stay here or walk your hands over toward the right side. Notice if you walk the hands toward the right, if the hips are trying to shift with you, keep pressing that right sit bone back in line with the left. If you walk your fingers over toward the right, reframe your front foot. We're gonna rebend the front knee, left hand plants down, left toes tuck under. Reach your right arm up and open as you lift the left knee up. Take a deep breath in, spinning the chest open. And then we're gonna find extended side angle, bringing your right forearm to your right thigh, spin your back heel down, and then lift the left arm up or forward. An extended side angle. Notice if your chest is collapsing toward the mat, see if you can rotate it open. So you can push into that right elbow. You can even bring your right hand down to the mat inside of your right foot if you'd like. Push down through the knife of your back foot so much so that the inner arch of your left foot might start to peel away from your mat. Really feel that stretch in the outer edge of the left leg all the way up into the outer edge of the left hip. Take a breath in, prosarita as you exhale. Fold forward, let the head drop, let it go. We're gonna shift the weight into the left foot and find skandasana as you bend your back knee, straighten out the right leg. Hands can stay in front of you for balance or you might bring them to your heart or tee the arms open. Some folks like to bind around this back knee. I'm gonna go with heart center for today and focus on lengthening the spine. Look toward your top foot. Take a breath in. We're gonna release the hands to the max. Rebend the front knee, plant the hands, and then step your right foot back to a plank. Pause here. Spin your heels to the left. Reach your right arm up and open. So side plank position. You can always drop your left knee underneath your hip for a little bit more support. If you want a little more challenge, you can load that left shoulder by lifting the right leg up. Take your right arm forward, breathe in. We're gonna come hands and knees on the exhale. Cow pose, arch your spine, pull the heels of your hands back toward your knees, lift your chin. Toes are tucked under so we can take it right into downward facing dog as you have feet. Left leg lifts on the in breath. Step forward as you exhale, warrior one, breathe in, reach up. Lightning, exhale, pull the fingers back. Reverse triangle or sky archer, inhale. Cartwheel the hands, or cartwheel the right hand down rather, right knee stays lifted as you lift that left arm up and open. Nope, that's not what we did. We dropped the back knee down and we came into a supported crescent first. There it is. So hips are stacked over that right knee. No problem if we take a little detour, we always find our way back. Breathe in and then release the hands, straighten out the left leg just until you feel a stretch. Notice I'm super aware on this leg of where I need to go easy, where my range of motion is just different. We want to work in a range of motion that we can maintain awareness and a sense of ease. It's okay if it's challenging, but if we shift into a zone of pain, we've moved past that healthy awareness in the body. See if you can play in those boundaries. So sometimes this practice is about learning where we set limitations that maybe we don't actually have, where we have some limiting beliefs. And sometimes it's about learning, especially our body's boundaries and how to respect and honor those. And it's okay for it to be a little messy, just like in life. So to walk the hands forward, now we've got our dragonfly twist, lifting the back knee up, breathing in, and then prasarita is the breath out. Shift the weight into that back foot, I'm second guessing this as well. Yeah, we'll get extended side angle. 
Shift the weight into the back foot as you straighten the right leg and bend the right knee. Hands either at your heart or tent the fingers. You have the option again if you'd like to bind around the right knee. Look forward, take a big breath in. Let's add our extended side angle for your left forearm to your left thigh. Right arm reaches up and over. Rotate the chest open toward the right side of the space or even toward the ceiling. Deep, deep breaths here as you press down through the knife edge of your back foot. Breathe in, square the chest. High push up, plant your hands, spin your heels to the right and then lift that left arm up. Option to drop the right knee or to lift the left leg. For three, two, take the top arm forward, breathe in. Hands and knees as you exhale. How? Pull the heels of the hands back, lift your heart, lift your chin. Down dog, tuck the toes, send your hips back. Right away, look toward your pinky fingers, breathe in, and then step to Malasana at the top. You can hop if you want. Find Malasana, take a breath in as you press your elbows into your thighs, and then fold forward as you empty. Heel to the feet a little closer together. Let's unroll all the way up right away. Inhale. Open arm twist to the right. Option to bend the knees as you exhale. Back to the center. Breathe in. Twist to the left. Empty out. Take it back to the middle on your in-breath. And then fold forward. Exhale. Halfway stretch. Breathe in. Plant the hands, vinyasa will meet in downward facing dog. Keep your breath nice and smooth, inhale. Down dog as you empty. All right leg high, breathe in. Step it through as you exhale, warrior one. Finish your breath. Lightning, pull the navel in and the fingers way back. Reverse sky archer, inhale. Let's see, cartwheel. Mm -hmm. We're going to drop the back knee, inhale the arms up. I'm not sure how we got there, actually. And then straighten out that right leg. Stay here, breathe in. Breathe out. We've got dragonfly twist on an in-breath. Extended side angle on the out. Reach your left arm forward, breathe in. Cross arita, empty it out. Skandasana, bend the back knee, look forward, take a breath in. And then to the top of the mat, high plank to side plank, right arm lifts up. Breathe in. Vinyasa, however you want to get to downward facing dog. We've got the left leg, inhale. Step forward, exhale, warrior one, breathe in. Lightning, empty out. Reverse, inhale, drop the back knee as you exhale, arms come up, breathe in. Hanumanasana, straighten the left leg and breathe out. Stay here, take a breath in and a breath out. Dragonfly twist, peel that left arm up, lift the right knee. Cross our right, or extended side angle, excuse me, extended side angle. Reach your right arm forward, breathe in. Cross Arita as you breathe out. Bend into the right knee, look forward, Skandasana on the in-breath. High push-up to side plank, lifting the left arm as you exhale. Reach forward, breathe in. Downward facing dog, we'll meet up there. Nice deep breath. And press the hips back. From downward facing dog, look at your palms and then we're gonna drop onto the forearms. Turn your palms to face one another. You might even make fists with your hands. Try and bring your wrists into neutral here. It's called dolphin pose. You can absolutely bend your knees, but press the forearms down. Let the head drop so the crown of the head is dropping down toward the mat. It's not touching the mat between your elbows. And then really push the elbows down and energetically push the elbows toward each other. Feel the stretch and the energy in your back. Keep that energy as you walk your feet back. So we're gonna find a forearm plank. Keep pushing straight down through the elbows. Shoulders are stacked right over your elbows. And then lengthen out through your lower back, drawing the abdominals in, 
tucking the ribs in line with your hips. Stay here if you need more. You can lift the left foot. Keep breathing. If you still need more here, you can reach the right arm forward, maybe tent the right fingers. If you've got the right arm and or the left foot lifted, bring those back to center, pause, and then option to switch to the other side. Maybe the right foot lifts. Maybe the left hand tense and the elbow lifts off the mat for three, two, stay in your forearm plank, take a big breath in, and then shift forward, slowly drop the hips. We're gonna come right into Sphinx pose. Walk your elbows a little further forward, turn your palms to face up. Separate the feet if you'd like to give your lower back a little space. Maybe you adjust where your elbows are. Maybe you let the eyes close down. We'll be here for about 20 more seconds. If it feels good to add some movement into the head or the neck, you can experiment with that. Stay here, or if you'd like to find seal for the last couple of breaths, walk your hands for the top edges of your mat, straightening out the elbows. Maybe the chin tilts up, breathe in, and then slowly lower down. Make a little pillow for your forehead or for one of your temples by stacking the hands. Stay here and breathe into any of those rebound sensations. So maybe you feel the lower back after that extension, maybe you feel the shoulders or the neck. And see if you can breathe into areas that feel tight. If you turn your head to one direction, go ahead and switch, nod your head to the other side. When you're ready, bring your legs a little closer together and your hands underneath your shoulders. Draw the belly in and up as you press back to a seat on your heels. So we're gonna sit back onto the heels with the toes pointing back behind you, stretching out through the tops of the feet. And stay here or bring your hands back behind you, starting to stretch out through the quads a bit. And stay there or Push into your shins and start to lift the hips up. So stretching through the quads a lot here. Send your tailbone toward your knees instead of arching the low back. Lengthen your lower back toward the top of your mat. Pressing down through your shins. Pay lots of attention to the knees. Find that respectful relationship with your body and with the range of motion that feels available today. See if you can appreciate it's what it is to be in a body today, exactly as it is. Take another big breath and then slowly send your hips back towards your heels. Walk your hands back in front of you, all the way in front of you. Shift the weight into the hands, tuck the toes under, and then shift the weight back towards your heels, finding toes pose. So we're sitting on the balls of the feet and the toes and the heels, stretching out the soles of the feet, that plantar fascia. This is too much. You just bring the hands forward a little bit, take some of the weight off of the soles of the feet. If you can, and you're upright here, bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers behind your head, and then keep the neck neutral, keep the spine neutral as you open through your elbows as much as you can. So elbows go wide, 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 wide here. 
looking for a stretch in the front of the chest through that underarm area. If you're working on camel or wheel, having that pectoral insertion nice and supple, supple and strong is gonna help a lot. Make sure the teeth are unclenched, jaw is soft, brow is unfurrowed. If you've got your hands behind your head, bring the elbows together, tuck the chin toward the chest, round your spine like you're in cat pose here, arching your back. And then lift it up and open this time, take a back bend, drop your head into your hands, point the elbows wide, breathe in. Release slowly through center, palms face down. Untuck the toes, shift back to your heels, walk the hands behind you. Option to lift the knees this time. Really stretch through the shins and the tops of the feet. Drop the knees if they're lifted. Maybe you bring your hands to your heart. Maybe you bring them all the way forward. Lift up, tuck the toes under, and then sit back onto your heels. Stay here or lift your knees up, finding toes pose. I thought I was going to make this an easy class, <laughs> and then here we go. <laughs> it's amazing when some parts of the body don't feel so great, how other parts still move pretty well. And we want to find that so that we're still able to go with the flow of life. Sometimes we do need to fully, fully take it down a notch and find stillness or rest. Drop the knees down, untuck the toes, sit the hips back, lift the knees. Drop the knees down, lift the hips, tuck the toes, sink the hips back, lift the knees. Go side to side or front to back, I should say. Really great mobility work for the ankles and the feet, for the knees, really great balance work here. Just here for three, two, ooh. <laughs> Last one. Separate your knees wide and then walk the hands forward. We're gonna find thread the needle. Bring your right arm underneath between your left elbow and your left knee. Just melt down onto the right side of your face. You can also bend your left arm and bring your left hand underneath your right temple. Likewise, you could reach that left arm forward and slightly to the right to find a stretch through the upper back. Go ahead and come back through the center. Bring both hands down for a moment. Pull the chest through, little powder stretch, lift the chin, little arch in the spine, and then neutral. Thread the left arm under. Find your threaded needle on this side. Remember the right hand can be a little support for the left temple, or you can reach that right arm forward and out to the left. Slowly come back through the center, bring the hands real close to the knees, arch your spine, lift the chin, lift the chest, breathe in. And then neutral spine, sink back onto your back with your knees bent, just like we started. You use the knees to roll down easy. Separate your feet to the edges of your mat with the knees bent, bring your arms to a goal post or a T or out over your head, and then toggle your knees nice and slow side to side and let the eyes soften or close. Just feeling the movement of the hips and the pelvis. Notice if there's any gripping. And let this gentle swaying motion, this rocking motion, help calm the nerves. As the nervous system down regulates the muscle tension in the body decreases. So especially if we're dealing with tightness or pain, finding ways to relax the nervous system, there's everything's connected and help 
minimize that experience of tension in the body and bring the body into a state that healing is a little bit more available. Keep toggling your knees side to side, slowing this motion down and walking your feet a little further away from you every time you toggle knees side to side. So we're moving towards straightening the legs for Shavasana, but going slow to get there. When you're ready, you can find Shavasana or some other resting pose. If there's any other ways of stretching or moving that you need before you can drop in and let the body relax into stillness, you can add those in along the way. When you land in your resting shape, if you're finding it hard to drop in, you can do one last muscle, progressive muscle relaxation activity together. Make fists with your hands and then make fists with your feet by curling your toes in towards the soles of your feet. And just squeeze the hands and the feet as much as you can without hurting yourself. You might squeeze up other muscles in the body as well. Take a big breath in, squeeze as hard as you comfortably can. Hold that squeeze and slowly release it as you exhale. Slowly, 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 letting the fingers uncurl, letting the feet relax. And stay here, continuing to let that relaxation, that sense of melting spread through your entire body. You can listen for the sound of my voice in just a few moments to end our practice. When you're ready to move on, you can nod the head slowly side to side or take a long body stretch by interlacing your fingers and reaching the palms back as you bring the legs together and point the toes forward. And move nice and mindfully, meeting me in a seat, taking your time to get there. When you land, you can bring the hands back to the heart and acknowledge yourself for showing up for your practice. Maybe recommitting that intention to do your best to take care of yourself, knowing that taking care of yourself will look different week to week, day to day, maybe even sometimes breath to breath. Let's take one more cleansing breath together here. As you reach your arms out and up, breathe in, gather in some good fresh prana. And then exhale, let it go. Thank you so much for sharing some of your morning, your day with me. Keep taking good care of yourself and I hope to see you soon.